Hello everyone. Welcome to this series of problem solving interview questions. My name is Ashish and today we will be talking about subset sum problem using memoization approach. Now in the last video we talked about the backtracking approach for it and in the end we saw why that is not the most optimized solution and the idea behind memoization and dynamic programming. So today we will be talking about the memoization approach and we will see how we can convert that backtracking code into a memoization code with little bit of tweaking. So stay tuned to this and let's get started. Just to brief about the last video, what we saw and what we meant about the overlapping is, so given the problem is a subset and given a sum, we have to find if there exists a subset whose sum is equal to the given sum. Now in the last approach we saw how we can either take an element or we can exclude an element. We have two choices and similarly we draw the whole graph for it and the total where 2 to the power n subsets is something we have to generate and that leads us to O of 2 to the power n as a time complexity and that's huge and we know how that is huge you can watch out my time complexity video so we saw there are like a lot of overlappings here happening here and here like 16.4 here is 16.4 to 4 like that so if this is this is the case and we have to optimize it we can simply store these values in a data structure and we can approve this improvisation and that was the logic behind memorization so I hope you are clear about that approach. If you are not, just watch the previous video about the backtracking approach and things will be pretty clear about that. So now let's jump on to the code. Since we, uh, this was the code, I mean more or less this is the code. I have just removed some of the parameters. You can find the source code in the description for that backtracking code. So this was the whole code basically which we wrote. So uh, we are at every step we are either taking that element by subtracting that element from the total sum or we are not subtracting, that is excluding that element and at any cost we are incrementing in this case we are decrementing because we are starting from the last and we are coming towards the end where we are checking for the base condition which is sum equals sum should get to zero so uh, this was the code for the backtracking one now since we saw about the overlappings in this case 21.4 in the uh, previous slide so somehow we need to store these values in a data structure now how can we store it? I mean, uh, let's think for a while, which data structure to pick in this case. Now, we need something to have a fast lookup in this case, because since let's say we're calling for function of 21 and four in this case. Now, if you're calling for 21 and four, we should be able to get that value as quick as possible, rather than computing it or rather than uh, delaying it. We saw that there are overlappings and we need to have a fastest lookup. So which data structure is best for it? Obviously the answer is hash maps. So let's use a hash map, which will provide us with O of one as a lookup time. And of course O of one as an insertion time as well. Now, if we need a hash map, what all could be the key and value for it? So now what could be the key for us in this case? Now the values of course we know that this total function call or the output of it as it is true or false whichever we will find in the subs sub problems will be the value now what will be the key for it we can see that uh, think for a while pause this video and come back again so we can see at every step that the two things are changing one is the index and one is the sum now at every step or every sub problem we have to form something which is made up of these two values so let's say our key is made up of this n which is the index uh, and which is changing at every step and something the sum that is also changing at every step. So sum and index together can form a key. Now you can have, you can just add it because a lot of other combinations will give. So let's take it as a string. So let's say this is one of the keys and there is nothing wrong or right about it. You can have any other symbol, you can have your own unique key, but that, sh that key should be made up of n and the sum. That is the point and you can have any other variations. Now, we have the key which is unique at every, at every step. So let's say we have this 21.4 function call at one step and there is another call let's say this is function of again 21 4 and let's say there is something which is calling 
like 36, 5 or something like that, again and again. So if that is the case, we have already found this 21 and 4, we can simply look up into our hash map if it is already found or not. And let's say this hash map is called as memo. It's a hash map which, which will store our key and value pairs. That is key is the unique key and value is either true or false. So let's say 21 is false here. So it will not calculate this 21 4 again, rather it will just pick it up false and it will return, return from here. So in that case, we are not calling this whole tree again and again. So this 2 to the power n is just called for n times for uh, basically n and the sum. So n into the sum will be the time complexity. Oh, we will come to that later. So that is the idea behind it. Now let's see how we can convert this code and into a memorization code. So let's look at the code. So in this code, what all things do we need? We need a hash map where we can store our already computed values. So let's call that hash map as mem. And that is a parameter we are going to add it here. Let's say memo is a hash map and it's a map which has a key of the key which I just showed you made up of the index and sum and boolean. So this string and boolean is the type of it. Now, first thing first is we need to form a key. Let's form a key first. So string key here would be n and I'm just taking an example of this one and it is a sum. So that is going to be the key for my hash map. Now, once we are in the, in the chain and we know that we have to look up or we have to add it to the map. So first we need to look up if the value is already computed. So if memo dot get off key if that element is not already computed, that is, if we do not find it in the memo hash map, in that case, we will add it to the map and it will be memo.put in the Java case and put dot, we put that key and the value will be, in this case, it will be or of both of this. So it will be include or exclude. Uh, okay, so now if this is the case and if we have found already calculated the element in the memo that is in the lookup and this call will not happen then in that case we do not need to in, uh, return this one we can simply return the value which is already present in the memo so remove this and just return what, whatever is present in the memo so memo dot get off that key and that is basically the whole code for memoization. So you, you saw that how with a little bit of tweaking, the code is very simpler. Even in dynamic programming, if you are, it's a different approach, but if you follow this, if you know the fundamental of how this is formed, how this is happening, even dynamic programming is going to be very easy for that. So we just saw how we can convert a backtracking code into memoization code and what is the logic behind it? What is the thought process behind it? And this is simple enough to write the uh, memorization code and the time complexity in the, in the case of backtracking was 2 to the power n that's because of all the subsets which are we are generating and total subsets were 2 to the power n and that's that's why it was exponential time complexity now in case of memorization it will be you can there are a lot of ways to find this time complexity but a simple way to think about it is you have a index and you have a sum so you are generating at least n into sum of keys in your map. So in that case, your time complexity will be O of n into the given sum at worst case. And that's the time complexity and space complexity here because you're storing all these keys and values in the map, even the space complexity will be that much. So the space complexity is again O of n into sum. And in this case, the backtracking case, the space is of constant, that is one. And when it comes to taking time versus space, there is a trade-off and we mostly consider about time complexity. We need our systems to be efficient enough. So in dynamic programming, we will see how this space goes away and only 
the time complexity prevails as this much and that is the most optimized solution we ever have for the subs subsystem problem. Now, if you take n value equals 60, so 2 to the power n becomes 10 to the power 18 and that will become 31.7 years is the time taken by the backtracking solution. Now, why that is and how that is, you can watch out my time complexity part 1 video for that. And in this case, let's say n equals 60 again and that will be sum is equals let's say 10 and in this case it will be 600 and that's equals 600 nanoseconds. So see the difference between this nanoseconds and the total years. So that's what the complexity is useful for and how that affects. So if you want me to discuss about the dynamic programming solution, do mention in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video. Till then take care, subscribe to my channel, see you.